the reggae revival movement is promoting his last work called the Dread and Terrible Project. It's an honor to me to welcome the building Chronix. Welcome. Yeah. Give thanks. Yeah. Everyone yeah, say greetings to all New Zealand. What is the Dread and Terrible Project and what is the real purpose of the Dread and Terrible Tour? Yeah, well, um, uh, when I first um, came up with the with the concept of Dread and Terrible, it was supposed to be my first official EP and then Chronics Music um, group, you know, and then I, I, I you know, I kind of changed my mind from doing an EP, but it still wasn't an album, you know, so I, I didn't know what to call it, an EP or an album or LP, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just call it Dread and Terry Project and like the the real meaning of the, the musical aspect of it is to kinda of bring awareness to the to the Rasta community worldwide, the young Rasta community. You know, because the elders witnessed a lot of things and you know, fought a lot of fights, you know, for our sake. But you know, a lot of uh, the majority of our generation forget that. You know, and then the the whole essence of Rastafari is then taken for granted. And Rastafari is just one example, but on a general scale, you know, roots and culture and people's traditions and customs, you know, is something that the youths of today must hold dear and, and true to their heart, you know. So the Dread and Terror project is like a reminder, you know, of what happened then and how it is still relevant now, you know, to live that life of forefathers and we, you know, so. mm -hmm. Mm. Can you share with us how Rastafarian come to your life? You were born in as a Rasta baby, your parents were Rastas, or you just find Rastafari in your journey, in your life? Well, yeah, I, well, in the true essence of what Rasta means, what the word Rasta means, I feel like every human being was born a Rasta, you know? True. Um, but on a different consciousness level. You know, and then as you grow, you discover that that consciousness that it's not new, but that undiscovered consciousness you grow and you grow and you discover it over time. You know, and Rasta don't always come in the form of red, green, and gold, and you know, what I mean, and dreadlocks and things. Rasta is a higher consciousness than what any physical word or lifestyle can explain. You know, so whenever. Whenever I I define Rasta as you know that that different level of being and consciousness that you discover over time. So for I and I personally, I grew up in a Christian family. You know, um, went to church. You know, just like the average Jamaican youth. You know, went to church, school. You know, friends and whatever. And, you know, um, when I when I was leaving high school. You know. Um, that's that's when I started to to read more about the teachings of His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie, and um, more about Marcus Garvey, more about Leonard Howell, you know, more about even Martin Luther, and all of these great revolutionaries. And it's funny because the people who are labeled as revolutionary are very loving, um, spiritual people, you know. They weren't criminals and murderers and soldiers, you know. Like people like Bob Marley who then claim he's a revolution. He has never been charged for any killing. You know what I mean? So the revolutionaries happen to be very loving and spiritual people, you know. So I started reading them more about them, and that is when you discover true self, which in my definition is Rastafari. Hearing your music seems like. You were surrounded by usually talking about nature and natural elements and, and um, simple things like food and and those kind of things uh, you don't find in the city, you know? You connect it oh, to well, that, you city know. City in Jamaica is much different because you know, our city is not as concrete as these first world countries, you know? Not as concrete. We farm in our in our yards, you know. We, they are like in in an average house, in an average yard in, in Jamaica, there are like three or four big 
giant fruit trees, mangoes, yeah. apple, everything. Aki. You know what I mean? So, Aki, that is in the country and in the city, everywhere. Wow. You know what I mean? You'll have a bank, then there will be a fruit tree right at the bank. People climbing the tree in front of the bank, the plaza, the mall. There is fruit trees in the mall, people picking. You know what I mean? So, Jamaica is like that, you know? So, most Jamaican youths who who are true to their Jamaican culture and heritage, you know, will embrace these things. Yeah. Usually, you, when you write a song for chronics, how's your process? I know maybe you can have different ways to, but how usually you write your songs? Yeah. For me, music just comes. You know? Yeah. you know, music is like one of those things that just happen. It's not like the weather where you can predict that tomorrow is going to be a good day for music or a bad day. Music, it just comes, so, and that's for me. Uh, I can't talk for an next person, but um, for me personally, music just comes, you know what I mean? Like, anything can be anything in nature, in reality, or in the physical world, and the spiritual world can inspire music and insight, real inspiring music, you know? So, yeah, for me, it's anything the wind, a person, a place. A memory, a thought, a feeling, a shape, a color, anything can inspire something. Here. So that's my process. What, what is your, how this come to you? How did you start to link up with so many people you know, from Earth, Earth, Earth? Well, the world, the world is small these days. That's the first thing. And um, like for instance, Pierre, I met Pierre with, with Teflon in a, a, a zinc fence records meeting. You know what I mean? We went to link Pierre at, at the house he was staying in Jamaica. And, um, so it's actually being a producer. I, I, I met a lot of these people as a producer. You know, or as a writer. Or, you know, in, in that behind the scenes aspect. You know, so. And you will, you will, it's easier to network when, when you are that. Um, elastic and flexible in music you know because as i say as a singer when you are when you are a musician your network will be bigger because you met a, you, you will meet people as, as a guitarist that you didn't get to meet as a singer you know what i mean so myself as a producer and a, and a, a musician and an artist that's like having three networks you know and, and people you don't get to meet as an artist you meet as a producer. You know, a lot of artists that I always want to do a song with, I end up producing a song for them. See? You know what I mean? Instead, but you know, at least you get to meet them. So, initially, I had initially known a lot of people before you know, I started singing. You know? So, I think that kind of propelled you know? And then from my father, I, my, my father knew a lot of people musically that he didn't personally introduce me to them, but it made the introduction a lot easier for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, man. You have your own record label, Chronics Music. Is this is being making it easier for you in your music career? Can you share with us what the, those experiences to be an independent artist with own record label? And what those important thing for these times, you know? Because it's really hard. We know it's really hard. You make it the hard way, you know? Um, yeah, just yeah, share well, that with us. Well, for me, being an independent artist, you can't say it's easy and you can't say it's hard. I think it's relative. For me, it's not hard because I enjoy all of the, the work that I do as an artist. And as an independent artist with a, a small team, that is limited by funds and many other things. You know, you have to be very creative, you know? So, as a producer, we have to record our own thing, you know? I have to design my own CD cover sometimes, yeah. um, you know? So I have to be my own this, and you know, we have to shoot our own videos sometimes. A man hold the camera, and then the next man hold the camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's fun for me, you know what I mean? And like, these are the things you don't get to experience when you're assigned. 
I think after a while it, it will probably be necessary, uh, more necessary than it is now. Coming to you know a major deal or something like that. But right now I feel like I'm learning a lot of things that I would not have learned if I had everything on a silver platter, you know what I mean? So no we we lot more we have to be more flexible and we have to be more self sufficient. You know? So I don't know. I think for an artist who don't enjoy doing these things, it's it's probably a, a better thing to do just to get a major deal, you know what I mean? But for me yeah, it's fun. It's like every day is Christmas, you know. Yeah. <laughs> True. What is your vision of dance, real dance or music? Because you show a lot of versatile in your music and you can do dance or beats, reggae beats. Uh, you, as well, you got your own version of it, dance or? Well, <laughs> you know, dance all is really in, in my interpretation and observation. You know, Jamaican culture have a history just like every other musical culture, you know. It have a history and you can't leave out any part. When you're talking about history. So, well, first we have to know where the word dancer and where the whole energy of dancer came from. You know, that's a, a historic thing because the dancer was created. What dancer really is, it was created to, to present music that was not being presented by the mainstream media. Right. You know, so it was the ghetto poor people, the marginalized people of Jamaica it was their way of expressing their music. You know? And a lot of music that we know now as mainstream music was born out of that, which is reggae music. You know what I mean? Because the dance hall was created to play reggae music. So the dance hall started out as a place and then eventually that place you know grew a personality of its own well yes we're here a special day here at conch records with well, like chronics yeah, live on the rake and base fm